Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Remember that lampshade that I tried to turn a couple of videos ago and all I got was sticks after the end? I was really dismayed about that. But the other night at our wood turning club I was talking to Lauren who described a very similar experience that he had and he showed me a picture of a leaf that he had actually done some piercing on the leaf to from his disaster. So I decided, hey, I have a big chunk of that. Why not try that sort of technique? So here is my lampshade in the form of a leaf. I used uh, my carving tools to pierce it and to uh, carve it out into the shape. Made a pattern, so you'll see in the video. Uh, and I think that's a good way to make lemonade out of my lemon uh, of a lampshade. And then in the next video, then uh, we'll talk about this uh, stand that I made for it that incorporates an off-axis work and some bent work. And But we'll talk about that later. If you recall, this project started off with a nice chunk of fresh wet aspen. With all that weight, I used a more secure mount, at least I thought, screws through a steel faceplate, then off to start turning the exterior. Then I hollowed the lampshade down to about a 5 16 inch wall thickness. I was doing very well. Then I needed to smooth out the exterior just a little more. I should have made a faceplate for the life center end because it developed a wobble, probably from the screws in the end grain in the Espen loosening. Either this additional faceplate or a steady rest would have helped. In any case, I got a catch and that was a disaster. There was nothing I could do to salvage it as a lampshade, but I did not throw it away yet. After talking with Lauren at our club meeting, I decided to try to get something from this disaster. A little lemonade from my lemon. So I found a leaf on the internet, printed it off, and glued it to the biggest piece of the shattered lampshade. After a quick trip to the bandsaw to trim back the wood, I can start work with the high-speed rotary carving tool with a medium-sized coarse rasp bit. My intent now is to cut back the wood close to the edges of the pattern. The bit is too large for fine detail. Then I switch the bit to the smallest diameter that I have. This will have to do. Then use this bit to go around the perimeter of the leaf to follow the jagged edge of the leaf a little better. With the perimeter looking decent, I can start piercing the interior. I cannot replicate all of the detail of an actual leaf. I figure that if I use the major veins, and that with a little artistic liberty, I can get something that would be recognizable as a leaf. So I cut, start to cut the into the interior of the leaf. Hey, this is starting to look decent. This may be a good save after all. I continue to pierce sections of the leaf. As I get most of the hollows cut out, I have only the paper to remove. Instead of scraping off the paper, I start to remove it with a rasp. I like what I see as more organic and less machined flat. 
So I continue to remove the paper and go over the entire leaf again, adding more grooves that follow the general direction of the leaf structure. I do the same with the perimeter. I'm liking what I see. Finally, I sand with 120 grit sandpaper just to remove any heavy rest marks, but leave the organic texture that I've created on the leaf. I was going to apply green, but decide to leave it natural. Then spray it with rattle can lacquer. I think this leaf is pretty. My lemon is now lemonade. The disaster I suffered with the lampshade has opened yet a new path of potential projects. Please give this video a thumbs up subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new woodturning video. There are now eight years worth, over 400 videos to choose from on my website. But please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. <laughs>